Hello everyone, I know it's been quite a while since I did a video, but I am here to share with you the Procreate 5X Beta. Now by the time this video is actually out, you've probably already got the update. It's most likely already available for you on the App Store, but I will stress, first and foremost, that I strongly urge that you back up your work before you get the update, because there can be some things that go wrong for some users, I don't know why, but some people can lose their artwork sometimes. It doesn't happen very often, but it can happen, and it's a very good thing to be backing up your artwork on a consistent basis, just in case anything goes wrong. Uh, you don't want to lose your hard-earned creative work. So back up, then update, and join me, and we're going to go through it. I've got a big list of all the updates, and this is a very impromptu video, so it's not going to be very polished um, I haven't rehearsed anything, I'm just going to go through it and some of these I haven't even looked at yet so a lot of this will be new to me and you're just going to get my reactions to things and then later on I'll talk to you about some of the features that I might incorporate into my own work process and just what I thought I think in general so let's get straight into it hey so let's just jump in here I've put a few artworks in here already just to so I can play around with some of the new filters and things and show you kind of what they do so first up is pencil filters now this is a this is really kind of cool actually because it's something that I probably would have used in in Photoshop you can um, you can do a, an adjustment layer on photo in Photoshop which will do all sorts of kind of things like from um, the curves or hue saturation etc etc uh, and you can mask it to wherever you want so you can change the settings but you can mask it to only affect certain areas and you get to mask it with your stylus this is pretty much exactly not exactly but it's pretty much the same kind of thing which is like super super cool I don't know how I'm going to use it yet because I've gotten used to not using that in Procreate so yeah pencil filters uh, it says brush in image effects with your Apple pencil for the first time you can use any brush to paint in adjustments and effects exactly where you want. Smudge your filter to create textured effects like you've never seen before. You can even erase or adjust the amount in real time. Hmm, all right, well, let's just go color balance and we'll go pencil. So we'll choose a artistic, Taralia. Let's choose that one. Uh, now, I don't know if you're gonna, oh, you are gonna be able to see it straight away, wow. This is pretty cool. Now, what we're going to be able to do is what they've said in the patch notes is you can change that in real time. So we're painting it in, changing the color balance, which is actually really cool and really adds a lot more to this illustration. If I uh, put in this blue into the shadows. And we're using a textured brush as well, so you can use any brush to do this, which is pretty awesome. So, real time changing while we're still in the adjustment menu. Check that out. That That is a game changer right there. Oh, yes. I, I'm definitely going to be using this feature. It just gives you way more control, like quick control of your colors and your color adjustments. That is, that is pretty unbelievable. Let's go a bit crazier. So then you have this new menu that pops up in the adjustments menu. So you press your finger just on the screen and it will pop up this little menu, which you can preview on, on, on and off, which is cool. You can undo, we can reset, we can cancel and we can apply. So I'm just gonna apply this one. Pencil filter is actually on every adjustment, I believe. So if we go to hue, saturation, we have layer, we have pencil, color balance, pencil is there, curves, gradient map, Gaussian blur, wow, that's that's cool, you know, because you usually you want to blur in some motion effects and stuff like that, but you don't want it to blur everything. Maybe uh, motion blur. There you go. It's it's every filter, so that's really cool. Next, we have gradient map, which is something that I've played around with a little bit and I've really really enjoyed. So um, I'm going to do choose layer this time, just so it does the whole thing. And we have these really cool gradient libraries. You know, you can just, ooh, oh, it's so cool. You can customize each one as well. As you can see, I just opened that up. I'm gonna click done and we'll go back and we'll just go through some of these. 
Venice. I love that. It just, oh my god. It's so cool. Yeah, it's beautiful. Beautiful work, what they've done here. I think a lot of people are going to be very excited about this. I'm excited. Um, but if we go to Venice, and we'll see if we can change this to sort of be a bit more of what we want. Like, if we want more of the lighter areas to have a bit more of oomph into them, you can also change the color. <laughs> you can change the color. It's amazing. Ridiculously cool. It's really cool. So that is gradient map, and of course you can you can do gradient map with the pencil as well. So next we have all new filters. We have new glitch, chromatic aberration, bloom, halftone, and noise filters combined with the new pencil filters and dramatic finishes. Uh, yeah, glitch doesn't probably doesn't really suit this character, but we'll do it anyway. It'd be good for like um, like TV screens and things like that, and like science fiction concept work. I think a lot of people are going to be using this. I've already seen some people use this already in really interesting ways. Yeah, so it's just it's just fun. This is just fun. I don't think I'd use it very often unless something called for a glitch effect, I guess. <laughs> you know, that's pretty obvious. All right, next we have chromatic aberration. Chromatic aberration. Let's see what this does. Oh, I keep forgetting that the filters, you need to use your finger across the screen to set the percentage value. So make sure you do that. Oh, wow. Okay. That's pretty cool. All right. Now that I know what it does, we'll go back. Go back to chromatic aberration. And so we'll do it properly. So it, I do wonder, like, it's basically separating the, the red, blue, green channels and it's moving them out which is a very Spider-Verse kind of effect that they did in the Spider-Verse uh, animated movie, which was very cool. But is this how you use 3D glasses? I don't really know how it works, but I'm pretty sure it's got something to do with these three channels and separating them. And then when you put the glasses on, your brain kind of makes it pop out from the page. So is this, I need to get my 3D glasses and try this out. But if that is true, that could be really, really cool. I mean, it's a super easy way to do it. It's amazing. <laughs> you know, it's kind of interesting because she's this character that I draw drew for Summoner Wars. She's pretty much supposed to be very high <laughs> on something. She's completely out of her mind. So this effect kind of works for her. Anyway, next we have Bloom, which I think is pretty cool too. Let's go straight into it, and we'll do a layer, and we'll just boost it up. We won't change the settings yet, but basically, yeah, it's blooming all of the, the bright areas and putting like a glow to them, which is very cool. I think this actually might be more useful with the pencil option rather than the layer option, because then you can really kind of like paint in where you want these things to happen. Um, I might even do that now, actually. Let's hop out of that, go to bloom, click pencil, Let's just get an airbrush. There we go. Um, yeah. I mean, the cool thing about this, it might just look like I'm painting in a glow, but the cool thing is it's you can change it in real time. You can change those settings, you know, at so quickly and so easily. And it's just amazing that you can you can change things in real time. I think that's, that's the fantastic part of it. Rather than, um, you know, if I was to do this without this filter, I would make a new layer, make it a clipping mask, go down to probably add, grab a color, grab a brush, and just start painting in that way. You can see it's kind of, it's very similar actually. But the thing here is like, I can't change that on the fly. Uh, once, once I've painted it in there, that's pretty much it, unless I go to the um, the eraser and then start erasing it back and stuff. So very, very interesting. These are all really cool updates. What's next? Halftone is next. Where is that halftone? We'll do the whole layer. Oh, wow. This would have come in so handy for a job that I was doing last year. I can't even mention what the job was, but if you know what this kind of effect 
was used for recently-ish. You can kind of guess. Uh, my patrons probably will know because I kind of let the cat out of the bag in one of my sketchbooks recently. Yeah, this is amazing. Screen print. Wow, that's... <laughs> That's incredible. I was doing the same effect, but I was just doing it with the brushes in the Procreate 5 update. It does like a half tone kind of effect. But this literally takes your drawing and calculates what it should look like instantly. Absolutely incredible. Wow. <laughs> that's, Jesus Christ, that looks so cool. You have hats off to the guys at Savage. You know, they've really put in the effort here, and I've not seen any of this stuff, actually. Um, the possibilities of this sort of thing, um, people are going to flip out. Noise. Apparently we have new noise fil noise filters. Clouds. Hmm. Huh. Billows. Clouds, billows, ridges. Well, this is going to be cool because you can make, you know, different kind of noise textures. I like the ridges. I, I feel like I could use that. Oh, holy moly. <laughs> Jesus, guys. This is incredible. I know I'm just, like, praising, 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 but, like, this is... I just keep finding things that you can change, and it's pretty amazing what they've done. Wow. Octaves. Oh gosh. Right, so how would I use that? I've duplicated the layer. Let's delete that one. So there's two two of the character now. Uh, and that way I can lower the opacity and see what see what it looks like. Noise, add the layer. Let's go to ridges, pull it up, scale it up. Um, octaves, turbulence. Hmm, now we will lower the opacity. Oh, see, look at that. That's... That is so interesting. I freaking love it. That is actually a really cool um, update to this, to the noise filters. Fantastic. Reference companion. And let's pop in the reference. Having the canvas as the reference is pretty cool. When you're really, really, really close, you can um, you can see the effects instantaneously up here. And I can zoom in a little bit if I want to see it close up. So we can zoom in for some details. But you get the bigger picture, which is very, very helpful when you're zooming in on details and you can't see the rest of your canvas. And, it's always a good idea to make sure that you can see the bigger picture because you can easily get lost into details and not realize if it really works overall in the image. So that is a very cool addition. Uh, import image. Let's just say I want to draw this guy again and I want to reference him. So we've got that which is pretty awesome. So yeah, for doing doing comics and things like that, this is gonna be really, really handy because you don't have to um, exit the app to try and get your reference images of your characters that you're working on. You can just have them there and that is pretty sweet. You've got your reference right there, so it's pretty fantastic. What else can we do? Face. Oh God. So this is one of the strangest updates to Procreate. I kind of sort of knew it was coming, but I wasn't really sure what to expect. Basically, you can just start painting on your face. I think this is probably going to be best for makeup artists and the possibilities are pretty amazing. So I just turn that off and there you go. I have it on my face. <laughs> so you've got these uh, markers for your Let's just quickly scribble them in so you can see them a bit better. You've got these markers for you <laughs> for your face. You've got your two eyes, your nose, and your mouth, which is pretty crazy. Let's make me give me some dribble or something. Yeah, this is really silly, but uh, I'm sure there are amazing artists out there <laughs> that are gonna do pretty pretty cool things. Me, I'm just gonna be an idiot and just paint all over my face. What an improvement. Ooh, options. Oh, wow, okay. So we can take a photo, 
which is cool. Ooh, three, two, one. Sure. Or we can record a video. Camera. I'm not quite sure. What, oh, holy crap! <laughs> holy crap! That's bizarre. This is bizarre, guys. This is really bizarre. What the hell, Procreate? <laughs> um, so yeah, we can record a video. I don't know what people are going to do with this. I'm really, really excited to see what people do with this. Obviously, it's not something that I think I'll be using, but um, yeah, I'm going to be very interested. All right, let's get out of that. I don't want to see my face anymore. So next we have palette capture and swatch drop. So it says, capture the colors around you with your camera or photos in your library. Palettes, new palette, create new palette, new from camera. All right, let's try that. Oh, this is so cool. All right, so I've got my little fairy here and we're gonna try and capture him. Uh, this is the first time I've ever done this, so it might be a bit wonky, but we'll try. Wow, check that out. That is absolutely amazing. All right. <laughs> I'm very impressed by that. That is really super cool. I think a lot of people are gonna be using that feature. So what else can we do uh, from photos? That's actually really cool too. So let's grab, this is one of my let's draw fantasy characters. Select, boom. We have all her colors right there. That's incredible. That's gonna be super handy for uh, when you're drawing the same character, uh, especially for like comics and things like that, or character design. Um, and you need to reference, you need to grab those colors again. That's just super simple. And super quick very very cool swatch drop this is uh, an illustration I'm currently working on for summoner wars and we will see what we can do so I'm going to set the line art as reference we're gonna go underneath and we are going to bring out that palette and see what happens Wow that's really cool um, I don't really, I have too many gaps in my artwork to use color drop, but <clears throat> if I made sure my, my, um, my line work never had any gaps, this could be a really easy way of filling in color really quickly. You definitely need to have very clean line work for this sort of workflow, but the, just the idea that you can now grab a swatch and chuck it on your canvas, that is super cool. Transform. Transform. Snapping. Magnetics. I, I have not played with any of this stuff, so I don't know how it works. Um, okay. Yep, so I can see it's kind of snapping in certain ways. That's cool. Distance. I think that I'm, going to, I'm going to need to play around with this quite a bit to see kind of like what these things actually do. So it gives you a bit of a readout on what you're actually adjusting it to, which is going to be very handy for a lot of people. All right, so next we have selection color fill. This is one I'm actually quite excited about to use because I think it may... Oh, let's move this guy out the way. It'll probably work its way into my workflow. So. Basically what I do in my workflow is I've got my lines for my character and then I want to fill the whole thing. Uh, it usually takes me quite a while because I use, I do it manually by hand. I don't usually use the selection tool very often, but what we can do now is jump into the selections underneath the line art, actually change, take the reference off. Underneath the line art, we'll go into selections and we'll go freehand. And there's a little button here called color fill down the bottom right. If we just click that and we're on freehand selection, we can start doing this. And if we close the selection, it will automatically fill. That is pretty cool because it's just going to mean this process, which is tedious. And it's my, oh, it's, I hate it. 
um, it's going to make things easier. One thing I will say is I don't like how the marquee of your previous selections still stays there. It's kind of ugly to look at, and I don't think we really need it. Like, it would be nice if they just kind of disappeared, I think. Um, but overall, you know, it's going to be much quicker to get this done. And this, like I said, this process is a little bit tedious. Um, so anything that speeds that up is good. I would have to say I really, this is an issue that I have personally, is with selections. I don't like being able to use my finger because I have finger gestures turned off on everything anyway. Um, so it's really jarring when I go to do it and sometimes I'll accidentally start a marquee with my finger without realizing. So I don't really like that. It would be good if they got rid of it. I just had an option somewhere to turn it on and off because you can't. So that's a little bit annoying. But apart from that, this is a really welcome addition to being able to fill color really quite quickly. So there you go. That is definitely something I'm going to be in using in my workflow. Uh, next, we have private layer. Now, this one, I'm a little bit... I'm not sure how I feel about this. And I think this is going to cause a little bit of controversy online within the art community because... Well, let's, let's read what it says. Private layer. Keep a layer private from your time lapse for all your sketches, notes, and reference images. A new canvas here. And let's add a photo. Let us use this guy. Okay. How do we make him a private layer? Let's see. I don't actually know how to do it. Swipe? No. I have no idea how to do it. Uh, it doesn't tell me really obvious, and I'm just not quite sure or what. I have no idea. Anyway, let me kind of show you what the point of this would be. The problem. The problem that I feel could be a problem. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet, right? But basically, it allows people to kind of cheat. I mean, so if you've found something online, found some artwork online, and you want to copy it, and you want to claim it as your own, this makes it super, super duper easy to do, to do so, assuming that I can get this feature to work. So we can just start, like, tracing over this, or pretending. <laughs> pretending to do some construction lines, you know, but it's a little disingenuous because uh, if that doesn't show up in your timeline, then yeah, so let's go to the timeline now and let's have a look. Obviously, you can see my reference underneath and you can see that I'm tracing over the top. With the ability to remove this layer and somehow make it removed from the timeline, it will appear like I'm just drawing out of the top of my head. But that's not the case. So I, I don't know how I feel about that. I'm be interesting to see, interested to see how the general wider community feels about it. I've heard sort of some people mention that like when somebody's actually tracing, you know, you'll be able to tell even though you won't be able to see the reference image or the hidden layer, you can kind of tell if somebody's cheating or not, <laughs> if you want to call it cheating. Um, I don't know how to work that feature, so I guess we'll move on. All right, Scribble integration. Scribble gives you a whole new way to add text to your artwork without ever having to put down your Apple Pencil. Hello. Hello. Procreate. <laughs> that was really terrible. Oh, it did it. That's pretty good. That seems to be recognizing my handwrite, my terrible handwriting very, very easily. So that's kind of cool. Able. Pretty cool. Pretty cool. <laughs> quick menu profiles. Tailor quick menu, pro quick menu profiles to your different creative processes like sketching, coloring, or finishing. I believe, yeah, we, we now have the option and the ability to add multiple quick menus. 
and customize them to all sorts of different things. So that is pretty cool if you're into your quick menus. Um, I don't know how many you can have. It looks like you can have a lot. <laughs> And one of the last things I'll go through is blur brushes. So effortless blend colors with the new blur settings in Brush Studio. Quick mix, blur. Okay, here we go. Well, it's an interesting add a new feature. I mean, that's pretty cool. Kind of like smooths, smooths out the brush and makes it less, less harsh and more smooth could come in very handy, so that's pretty awesome. That concludes my little very quick walkthrough of some of the new features in Procreate 5X. I hope you've enjoyed this chaotic kind of video. Um, some of these new features I'm definitely going to be using, like the gradient maps for sure, the new filters, Bloom. Bloom is definitely one I'm going to be using. Chromatic Aberration, I'd like to try and do some research to see if that is possible to kind of make 3D things that you can use 3D glasses for. I don't know. I'm going to have to look into that. Reference companion, I'm going to be using that a lot. Base paint, I don't know if I'll be using it, but I'm very, very curious to see what everybody else is going to do. Palette capture, I probably will try and use that. Um, I think it's a very powerful feature to just take out the, the camera and get some real life colors from, yeah, I was very impressed with the, the way that it works and samples the colors very accurately in a small section of the camera. Very impressed by that. Private layer, I couldn't get it working, so I'll have to come back to that, but I'm very interested to see everybody's opinions on that kind of concept. Those are the things I'm excited for and I highly recommend up, updating because there's lots of powerful new things here and it's lots of fun. So thank you so much to Savage Interactive for making this update available for everyone. And of course the update is free. So if you already have Procreate, you can update for free and you get all these new features. Um, but please do remember to uh, back up all of your work and you won't come into any trouble, hopefully. So that is it for me. I'm going to be doing lots more videos soon. I just got internet at my new place. So I'm going to be doing streaming and more videos. Everything's going to be happening from here on in uh, now that I'm getting settled in my new place. I still need lots of new furniture. I have a very small setup at the moment, but yeah, it feels good to be in my new place. So thanks for watching, guys, and I will see you next time.